10, 13, 9, 11, 8, bottom, 7, 7, 6, 6, 5, 8, 4, 3, 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, rush. Now we have come back into savagery again, into the old original cruelty where the women and children and old men and infants, babies are all killed. During the Second World War, cities in many nations were bombed, women, children, everybody killed indiscriminately. And then, of course, there came this ultimate immorality. Sixteen years ago today, when a bomb exploded over Hiroshima and killed practically everybody in the city. And that was only a little atomic bomb. The standard atomic bombs now are a thousand times more powerful. The three-stage fission fusion fission bombs that are piled up now by the thousands in the arsenals of the nuclear powers. One of these bombs has the explosive power of 20 million tons of TNT, seven times the amount of explosives used in the whole of the Second World War. And one of these bombs is enough to destroy any city on Earth. London, Berlin, New York, Moscow, Tokyo might kill as many as 10 million people, one bomb. And thousands of these great bombs are stockpiled in the arsenals of the nuclear powers now. We have to decide now, today, on the 16th anniversary of the destruction of Hiroshima, we have to decide whether we are going to continue along the path of militarism, continuing to increase our military budget, increase the stockpiles of great bombs, increase the size of the military forces, increase the effectiveness of the methods of delivering the bombs, make more efficient the process of wiping the human race off the face of the earth. We had the increase just four days ago by our Congress, increase in the military budget of the United States to a level of about $1,000 per American family for this year? Or are we, all of us, going to join together with the people of the rest of the world in a revolt against militarism, in the fight for peace and reason in the world, to rid the world of the great immorality of war, to get back, to force nations to accept the ethical and moral principles that are accepted by ordinary individual human beings all over the world. If we join together in the firm determination to rid the world of war, then we are going to succeed. We can succeed. Last night I had the strangest dream I never dreamed. I 
I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. I dreamed I saw a mighty room. The room was filled with men. And the papers they were signing said they never fight again. And when the paper was all signed and a million copies made, they all joined hands and bowed their heads and grateful prayers were prayed. And the people in the streets below were dancing round and round as swords and guns and uniforms were scattered on the ground. Last night I had the strangest dream I never dreamed before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. There are many ways to take action in the fight for peace. Every activity that any one of us engages in has two effects. It brings to the participants the knowledge that he is taking a great action, that he is doing something that will affect the future of the world. And then it has its effect on other people, encourages them to participate also in the struggle for peace. And so I say to you, do away with your apathy. Don't just lie down and be Hiroshima. Now is the time to fight for your lives and the lives of your children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren too. So let's take action. Let's march in peace marches, pray in vigils, beat the drums, the go out in front of the Rand Corporation, protest against Polaris, uh, join with Bertrand Russell when he pastes up an ultimatum on the uh, door of the uh, government, bombard the president, the secretary of state, and our senators, and even representatives. He stands with letters urging that they get some sense, come back uh, to sanity. Then, even if we are vaporized, atomized Hiroshima, we'll know that we have done our duty as thoughtful, sane, and high-principled men and women and children. But I believe that we can win. Men and women, stand together. Do not heed the men of war. Make your minds of now or never. Bat the bomb forever.
with the deep feeling of happiness I, that I had as I walked with my wife and with many friends here in Los Angeles, members of the Society of Friends and the Los Angeles Committee for a Sane Nuclear Policy, the Unitarian Church and Universalists too, and the Methodists, and just people, lots of them, uh, in the Peace March here. Every human being should have this feeling of exaltation, this feeling of deep happiness uh, that comes from believing that you are doing something that is really worthwhile, something that may have its effect on the whole history of the world, on the working for the survival of civilization, survival of the human race against the great immorality of war. You can see then why the scientists in 1957 decided to circulate a petition to ask the governments and peoples of the world to stop the, even the testing of nuclear weapons. And then it was decided to make this an international p petition. And in January of 1958, my husband and I presented it to the United Nations uh, this petition, which was signed by more than 11,000 scientists from all over the world. Then you know too, because many of you signed our petition, which we circulated in January of 1961. This petition was against the spread of nuclear weapons because we know and many people know that the more countries that have nuclear weapons, the greater the danger is to all of us. Sixteen years ago there occurred the partition of Germany and occupation of Berlin by the four uh, troops of the four powers, United States, Great Britain, France, and the USSR. Uh, on the 2nd of August of 1945, President Truman, Prime Minister Attlee, and Stalin accepted tentatively the oder nysa line as the boundary between Germany and uh, Poland, and of course uh, it was decided that sooner or later a treaty would be made with Germany, which would settle some affairs and would, the final delimitation of the Polish frontier, the western frontier, would then be determined. Well, Russia has become more and more concerned about Germany about the possible rearmament of Germany with nuclear weapons. And Russia uh, wants to have a treaty made, a treaty that will ensure uh, that there is not a remilitarized Germany that becomes a threat to the world again. Uh, she has threatened that if these negotiations are not begin begun, uh, she will make, Russia will make herself a peace treaty with East Germany in a few months. Well, it is high time that there were serious negotiations about a German peace treaty. It is essential, I believe that it is absolutely essential, that uh, these negotiations lead to a permanently disarmed Germany. I believe that the great evil of war can be abolished from the world. I believe that disarmament can be achieved. I believe that it is possible to organize the world community on principles of freedom and justice under law and mutual trust. And I believe that it is the duty of every human being to act on this conviction with words and deeds aimed against war, against the spread of nuclear weapons, and towards disarmament and perpetual world peace. Thank you.